Okay, so we're going to look at GCSE Maths Paper 2 Calculator Paper. And let's go have a look at the first question. So now we've got the probability of A and B. So this sign here represents and. So that's intersection. If you're a way to remember it, you remember it's like this. You put a line through and you get an A. The next question tells us to find the midpoint. Now, whenever you want to find the midpoint of two numbers, you have to add them together and divide by two. So if I want to find the midpoint, my first step for these coordinates is to add them together. So 10, add the x's and add the y's. So I've added the y's now, add the x's. 4 plus minus 2 is 2. And then I'm going to half it. Half of 2 is 1. So straight away, I know it must be that. And half of 10 is 5. Next question. Which of these is a geometric progression? Now, in GCSE, the two progressions whose names you need to know, you can have an arithmetic progression or you can have a geometric progression. An arithmetic progression is when something goes up by the same number each time. So you're adding. So, for example, 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 and so on. Whereas a geometric progression each term is multiplied by the same number each time. So we'd have 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 and so on. So we're looking for one of these. So where something is multiplied each time. So we take the first one. 1 times 3 is 3 times 3 is not 5. Not that one. 1 times 3 is 3 times 3 is not 6. 1 times 3 is 3. 3 times 3 is 9, 9 threes are 27, it must be that one. And if you wanted to double check, you could have a look at the last one. 1 times 4 would give you 4, 4 times 4 is not 9, so it's not that one either. Let's have a look at bearings. The important thing about bearings is that a bearing always goes from north. So we're going, so this is a bit weird, so you have to really think about this. It's the bearing off A from B. The from bit is the important bit. And that's where you're starting. So we're going to start at B. We're going to draw in our north line. And we want to go clockwise. So the same way as the clock. So we're going clockwise from here. And we're saying, OK, so we're going here. That would be 90. A bit more is 180. Here's 270. We want to go even further because we want to go up to, we want this to be 310 degrees. Okay, so now we're going to draw in our line. And that line takes us to A. But the question says, circle the bearing off B from A. So what it wants you to find what it wants to find out is that if I am starting at A, I want to go clockwise till I hit the line that joins with B. So that's the angle that I want. So let's think about it. We know angles in a circle add up to 100, uh, 360. Therefore, this angle here must be 50. So you've got 360 minus 310. We also know when we've got parallel lines that these two angles are what we call corresponding angles, so they add up to 180. So 180 minus 50 is 130, therefore our bearing must be 130 degrees. Right, we know the equation for the circumference of a circle. So the circumference of a circle, which is all the way around the edge, is pi d. Therefore k in this case must be pi. A nice easy question. Right, so I'm going to show you how to do this question without using any special calculator skills. And then I'm going to show you how to do it, a shortcut method, using your calculator. So let's have a look. It tells us first that it's given us some columns, so it's given you hints. It's told you you, could find, you might want to find the midpoint. You don't have to, but it's telling you you probably want to. So what's the midpoint of 0 and 5? Remember, midpoint, add the two numbers together. 
divide by 2. So 0 plus 5 is 5 divided by 2, 2.5. 5 plus 10, 15 divided by 2, 7.5. 10 plus 15, 25 divided by 2, 12.5. And we don't need to worry about the last category, mainly because it's also 0, and we're going to be multiplying them up. What we then have to do is times across. So 12 times 2.5, giving us 30. 7 times 7.5, giving us 52.5, um, 1 times 12.5, giving us 12.5. And the total here we know is 20. So then what we can also do is add up the other numbers. So 30 plus 52.5 plus 12.5, which gives you 95. You're then going to do this value here divided by this value here. So your mean is 1 divided by 2. So that's your estimated mean. The reason that it's estimated is it's because you've taken the midpoint as if it's a value. So you're going to put that in your calculator and you get 4.75 minutes. Right? Um, if you have a look, I'll show you how to use the statistics function on your calculator, if you have a calculator that does it, in order to find out to get this or to check your answers. Okay, so for looking at this, in order to use the calculator to do question six, you're gonna hit menu, you're gonna to go to statistics, and you're gonna choose one dash variable. And then in the X column, you're going to put those midpoints we worked out. So 2.5, 7.5, and 12.5. And in the frequency column, you go along, you go up, and you're going to fill in 12, 7, and 1. You're then going to press AC. Then if you press Option, you can select one variable calc, and you can see you get the 4.75. And if you wanted to write your working, it also gives you the sum of X being 95, and you also get your number of terms being 20, if you press the arrow down. So that's using the calculator for question six. 6B. So now it's said the station manager looks at the information in more detail. He works out an estimate of the mean using this information. How does his estimate compare with part A? Now, you could work it all out. And particularly if you use that trick in the calculator that we showed before, you could quickly work out your midpoints down the side and you'd get 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. Multiply across, so times these up. And it's actually not too bad because these come out as 0, it's 11, 7, 5 is 35 and 0. You could sum up this, it gives you 58. You sum up your midpoints, you still get 20. 58 divided by 20 equals 2.9. Now, if you remember from the previous question, we got 4.75. So 2.9 is lower than part A. So it's only one mark. You could also have a look at it and you could probably guess that would be the case because if you have a look here, we got 4.75 and most our numbers were between 0 and 5. Here we can see a lot of the numbers are between 0 and 2. So we would expect it to be lower. However, like I said, we can check it using the exact numbers. Right, let's have a look at question 7. Right, so first of all, what this means equivalent to. So when you see this sign, it's kind of like an equal sign but we treat each bit separately. Right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the left-hand side and we're gonna open that out. So five times seven gives you 35X. Um, I could put like that and I get confused, 35X. Five times eight to give you 40, plus three times two X, six X, three times B, three B. Then I've got my right hand side where I've got AX plus 13. So what we're going to say is they're equivalent. So that means the amount of 
x's on the left hand side is the same as the amount of x's on the right hand side. So let's have a look at how many x's we've got. So we've got 35 plus 6 on the left hand side. So altogether we've got 41 x's. And on the right hand side we've got a lots of x's. So this tells us straight away that a must be 41. And then the, the bits that are not x's we've got 40 plus 3b on the left hand side and that's equal to 13 on the right hand side. So we can solve that minus 40 from both sides gives us 3b equals minus 27. We can divide by 3 on both sides, leaving us with b equals minus 9. So 41 and minus 9 is our final answers there. Okay. Right, we've got two identical quarter circles and they're cut from a rectangle as shown. Okay. We want to work out the shaded area. So, what are we told? Well, we're told they're quarter circles. So we can see, if we were to do this, that this bit it must be half and this is half. So this much is six and this is six, which will be the radius, which means that this must also be six. So with that information, we can work out the area of the rectangle. So the area of the rectangle will be 12 times 6, which is 72. And then we can work out the area of a circle where the radius is 6. So we'll get pi times 6 squared. So we've got 36 pi. But we haven't got a whole circle. We've got two quarter circles, which I guess is half a circle. So the um, so two quarter circles equals 36 pi divided by 2, which would be the same as 18 pi. And then we want the shaded area, which is the rectangle, minus the two quarter circles. Notice how I don't put it in decimals till right at the end. Now I type it into my calculator and it gives me 15.5. Remember, this is going to be an area, so centimeters squared. Oh, they give it, they give you the unit, so we're all good there. Right, question nine. Oh, so I remember marking this paper, and a lot of students got themselves in a muddle here. But this is not difficult, you've just got to read it carefully. So the diagram shows the position of a tap when it's fully off and fully on. The tap is fully on when the angle of turn is 180 degrees. So when fully on, water flows out of the tap at 14 litres. So we've got 14 litres per minute. The rate at which it flows out is proportional to the angle of turn. OK, so the tap is 135 degrees. Now, remember, the maximum is 180. The water flows into a tank with a capacity of 79.8. Will it take less than seven and a half minutes? OK, so let's work out, first of all, how much of the 180 it's turned. So in our calculators, 135 over 180. And you can stick that in your calculator with the fraction button and it will tell you that's three quarters. So it's three quarters open. If it was fully on, it would be 14 liters. So if we work out three quarters times 14, that tells us how many liters per minute is flowing out. We want to get to 79.8 liters. So we can, we can do 79.8, divided by 10.5, and that gives us 7.6 minutes, which is more than 7.5 minutes. So we have to write a conclusion to get our last mark. So we can do three dots, which means therefore, 
We'll say no, it will take longer than seven and a half minutes. All right, question 10. We've got an equilateral triangle. The minute we see equilateral, we know all the sides are the same and all the angles are the same. So because the sides are the same, we can work out what X is before we even think about it. So we know that that must be the same as that. Well, we could choose any of them, but we'll choose those two as they don't have brackets in them. 4X plus 5. Put all your x's on one side and all your numbers on the other. So actually, let's put the 10 on the other side first. So plus 10. So we get 6x equals 4x plus 15. And um, we can move the 4x onto that side. So we get 2x equals 15. Divide both sides by 2, leaving us with x equals 7.5. So we know that x is 7.5. We can substitute that in. 6 times 7.5 minus 10. Remember, it's a calculator paper. Gives you 35. Now, what I would do as you go along is double check. Stick it into every single one. 7.5 minus 4 times 10. That also gives you 35. 4 times 7.5 um, plus 5 also gives you 35. So you know you've done it right. You're expecting all the sides to be the same. And now we're going to add up it because we want the perimeter. So we're going to add 35 plus 35 plus 35, which is 35 times 3. And we get 105. And this is centimetres. Now, is that bigger than one metre? Yes. So we say, yes, it is greater than one metre. We've got to write that conclusion. You want to get all the marks that you can. And so many students lose these super, super easy marks. Okay, so for this question, it's really important that you type it into your calculator correctly. So into your calculator, you're going to do four open brackets, one minus the fraction button, plus, and so on. So you'll see how I do that. In a bit, we're going to type it straight into the calculator. And when we do that, we get 3.04183 And we want to take it away. We want to know it's within 3.14. So we're going to leave that as our answer. We're going to do 3.14 minus and then use the answer key. And our answer comes out to be 0 0.098 dot 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 dot. And we can see that this is within, we can say which, remember, conclusion, super important, which is within 0 0.1. Right, so for question 11, we're going to put it into the calculator in one go. So you're going to press 4, open brackets, 1 minus, hit this fraction button, and you can put 22 over 57. Use the down arrow to go and then press a cross to do plus fraction button again, 22 over 85, across again, minus fraction, oh sorry I've written divide by mistake, but see if you make a mistake you can just press delete, you've got minus fraction button, 22 over 105, go across, plus 22 over 117, Across again, hit the minus sign, 22 over 242. And then make sure you go out and close the bracket. Hit equals, and this is the number that we put on the previous sheet. Again, this is how you use your calculator. So... We're going to plug it into our calculator exactly as is. And what we get when we press our ENG button is the answer in standard form, 2.85 times 10 to the 6. Okay, so for question 12, we're going to start with a fraction button. We've got 9.12 times by 10 to the power of 10. We're then going to use this arrow to go to the bottom. 
and then we're going to type in 3.2, the time sign, 10 to the power of 4. And when we hit equals, we don't necessarily get it in standard form. But you can hit this button here, which is ENG, and that converts it into standard form for you. But let's consider if it was in a non-calculator. How would we go about this? We would have 9.12, we take the numbers and divide them by each other. And when we do that, we would get the 2.85. We would then take the indices and divide them by each other. And when we divide indices, we take them away. So we would end up with 10 to the power of 10 minus 4, which is 10 to the 6. Now, if you've got time, you can always check your work. And you can double check that you're doing it correctly. Right. So Ashraf is putting boxes into a crate. The crate is a cuboid measuring 2.5 by 2 by 1.2. Each box has cube of length 50 centimetres. So as I read that, straight away that I notice is that... We've got this in centimetres, this is in metres, okay. The volume of the crate is 2.5 times 2 times 1.2, perfect. The box is a cube of length 50. The volume of one box is 0 0.125. And they've got the number of boxes, they're doing 6 divided by that. Now, the problem is here, if each cube box is of cube length 50, and I'm going to be putting them into a crate, I've also got to double check that 50 centimetres goes into each of these numbers, so they stack nicely, you know, lengthways, heightwise, in all directions. So the issue is going to be, is that it goes into 2.5 and 2, but it doesn't go into 1.2. So the problem is 50 centimetres does not divide 1.2 metres. So the maximum he's going to be able to fit will be lengthways, we've got 5, multiplied by how many 50 centimetres in 2 metres? That's 4. And the maximum amount of 50 centimetres in 1.2 metres will be 2, which will give you 40 boxes, not 48. So you'd say he can fit 40 boxes um, not 48. Right, yes, they do say it's a he. It's all good. Right. The cross section of a prism has n sides. Circle the expression for the number of edges of a prism. So if a prism has n sides, the edges are going to be 3n for that. So that's just, um, you can have a look at shapes and we'll see how that comes about. Right, question 15. Okay, this one, I'm just glancing over it. I see density and I see some ratios. And I need to think about what my formula for density is in case I'm going to use it. But you know what? You don't need to learn it. Look at the units. Grams over centimetres cubed. What do we measure grams in? We measure that in mass. Um, we measure mass in grams. And we measure volume in centimetres cubed. Okay. So we want to work out the mass of the metal. So what do we know? We know the volume of a metal, sorry, we know the volume of the metal, and we know it's made of copper and tin. So let's think, we've got copper, we've got tin, we're going to want to know um, the volume of each of those, and we're going to know the mass of each of those, to then find out the total, to then be able to find out the density. Or no, we know the density. Okay. So let's have a look. We know that for copper, we have a density of 
8.96. For tin, we've got 7.31. The total volume is 45. We can split that into the ratios, so we can say we know that we're going to do 22 plus 3, which gives us 25. So the amount for copper is going to be 45 divided by 25 times by 22, which gives you 39.6. The amount for tin is going to be 3 over 25 times 22 which is going to give you 5.4. Now I'll also show you on the calculator how to do your ratios using your ratio button in one go. So for question 15, you're going to use your ratio button to check that you've done it right. So you're going to go to menu, Oops, go to the end. You're going to put in that ratio of volume of copper to tinin, which was 22 to 3. And then you're going to say, well, we got the tin to be 5.4. So you put the 5.4 in, you'd hit equals, and you would double check you get the answer that you had for copper, which was 39.6. So it's just a way for double check your numbers. So now we've got those, we want to find out the mass. We can rearrange this formula. So mass equals density times volume. And when we do that, we will do 39.6 times by 8.96, and we get 354.81, da, da, da. And we can do 5.4 times by 7.31, and we get 39.474. The total mass, which will be for the medal, is going to be 394.29 grams. And that would be my answer. So I'm summing up the total mass. Um, make sure you do use your ratio button if you have it. It will make a lot of your calculations a lot easier. Okay, next question. Okay. We've got a cumulative frequency graph. Um, sorry, Tom, you can ignore this. It's me trying to make it less thick. Okay, so we've got a cumulative frequency graph and we want to find and estimate the median mass. So we've got 50 apples. So we've got 50 apples. Our median is halfway. So we think median, we think middle, half of 50 is 25. So what we are gonna do is you're gonna take a ruler and you're gonna draw a straight line from a long 25 until you hit your graph and then you're gonna go all the way down and you're gonna read off the value. If we have a look, that's one after 105 so that's 106 grams. Then the next bit tells us to estimate the proportion that have a mass greater than 115. So we go to 115 this time. So this time we were going that way. Now we're going upwards. We're starting at 115. We're going to go up till we hit the graph. You will do this nicer with a ruler. And we're going to read off that value. And that value there is 42. But we want to know which ones are greater. So we want to know which ones are bigger than that. So this is the bit that we want. So we've got 50 minus 42, which gives us 8. And it's asked us for the proportion. So it's 8 out of 50, which gives us 16%. Now you could have left it, um, not times it by 100 to give you a percentage, or you could have left it at 0 0.16. Not a problem, when they say proportion, it doesn't have to be a percentage. It can also be a decimal or fraction. Okay, question 17. A is a prime number, okay? B is an even number, okay? Circle the correct statement about N. 
Right, so if a is a prime number, when we square it, well, there's an even prime number and we have an odd prime number because 2 is an even prime number. So an even squared is even, an odd squared is odd. So a times b, so we've got prime number times even number. So an even times an even equals an even. An even times an odd is also an even. And an, um, so we know we're going to have an even number there. When we square something, it could be even or odd. And so when we have an even plus an even number, we end up with an even number. However, when we have an even number plus an odd number, we get an odd number. So that means it could be even or odd. Because with a prime number, you can have two, which is the only even number. It's actually my favourite number. Because it's such a cool number. But that's besides the point. Okay. Let's have a look at question 18. A bag contains 20 discs. 10 are red, 7 are blue and 3 are green. Marnie takes a, risk at rand a disc at random sorry, before putting it back. That is the important bit. It goes back in. Nick then takes one and puts it back. And Ollie then takes one and puts it back. So what's the probability they all take a red? So we want red, red red. So there's 10 reds out of 20. So Marnie takes a red, puts it back, so there's 10 again, there's 10 again, and there's 10 again. So you could cancel that and get a half times a half times a half, which is 1 eighth. Or you could just plug into your calculator as 10 over 20 times 10 over 20 times 10 over 20. Okay, part B. All 20 discs are in the bag. Reggie takes three discs at random, one after the other. After he takes a disc, he does not, they've even highlighted it for you, so he doesn't put it, put it back. Reggie's first disc is blue. Okay, so blue's happened. We're not that bothered about it because it's definitely blue. So for them to be all different colours, blue's happened. So he's got to be either red followed by green, or green followed by red. So red and green, or green and red. Okay, so this is the rule I want you to remember. When we're dealing with trees, and times, or plus. Okay, so remember red was 10, but he's already taken one out. He's taken that blue one out, so there's not 20 in there anymore. There's only 19. And green, there were three greens, and he's taken another one out. So now there's 18. Plus green, but the three out of 19, times by 10 out of 18. You can put that in your calculator with your fraction button and the brackets all in one go, and you get 10 out of 57. Question 19. There are four starters and 10 main courses to choose from. Two of the starters and three of the main courses are suitable for vegans. What percentage of the possible lunches have both courses suitable for vegans? Okay, so there are four starters and 10 main courses. So the total amount of options is four times 10. So there's four total options. For vegan, there's only two times by three. So there's only six options. So they want a percentage. So we're going to do six over 40. To make it a percentage, we times by 100. And we get 15. So that would be 15%. Right, question 20. N is a positive integer. We want to prove algebraically that this is a cube number. And you're like, what? So if you're not sure what to do, you've got some algebra there, just open out the brackets. Let's see what happens. So we're gonna do this multiplied by this. So essentially we've got two n squared times three over n. So that becomes six n squared over n 
plus 2n cubed plus 6n times n squared, so plus 6n cubed plus 6n minus 1, so minus 6n. Here we can see this cancels with that to leave us 6n. So we get 6n minus 6n, if we put those together, they disappear. And then we've got 2n cubed plus 6n cubed, which gives us 8n cubed. We're like, okay, can we write that as a, that's the same as 2n all cubed. And then therefore cube number, because you've got something with a cube sign outside. Right, question 21. Y is inversely proportional to X. Inversely, you see the word inverse and you're going to go, OK, it's one over. You see the word proportional, you're going to write equals K. You may have learned it as the funny fish sign and something, but essentially that funny fish sign means equals K. Inversely means you're going to do it over root X. And try use that second line. It's neat. You're going to get the right answers. Right. So let's plug some numbers in. We, we need to find out what the K is. So we know Y is 4 and we know X is 9. The square root of 9 is 3. So we get 4K times 3. We can times both sides by 3 to get rid of that on the bottom. And we get K equals 12. So our answer will be Y equals 12 over root x. And then it's asking us to work out the value of y when x is 25. So we'll say, OK, so y equals 12 divided by the square root of 25. The square root of 25 is 5, so we get 2.4. So our answer here would simply be 2.4. Right. Simplify fully. When you see something like this, you're going to think I've got to factorise. So let's have a look. Just take the numerator first, then the denominator. So let's take the numerator. What goes into x to the 5 and into 4x cubed? Well, it's going to be the x's, but how many? We're going to go with the lowest amount. So now to get to 5, we need 2 more. And we've got minus 4. On the denominator, well, we can take 3 out, obviously, and we get x minus 2. Now, hopefully, you've recognised the bit in the bracket on the top is a difference of two squares because you've got two square numbers and a minus between it. So what you're going to do is then say, well, that's the same as x plus 2, x minus 2, and what do we notice? That there's that on the bottom. We can cancel that out. We get x cubed, x plus 2, over 3. Question 23. So we've got a vectors question here. PQR is a straight line. P to Q and Q to R is split in the ratio 3 to 1. So if we were to split this up, there's one bit, two bits, three bits, and that's the same as that one bit. We know going from P to Q is A, and we want to go from R to Q. So if straight away we notice the arrow is in the opposite direction. So we can cancel these out because we know it's going to be a negative. Now, how much space is R to Q of P to Q? Well, it's a space of one of these bits. So it's going to be one third and in the negative direction, so minus one third A. OK, let's look at the next question. OK, so if we have a look. We've got this graph and we want to sketch X plus two. So these are quite good. You look at this and these are lovely. These are like gift questions. It's inside the bracket. Inside the bracket affects the X's. The X's are annoying. They're like your ex-friends, ex-girlfriend, boyfriend, ex-anything. They just do the wrong thing. 
So instead of plus two, to as we'd expect, they actually move to the left. So it's a translation of minus two in the x direction. So what's going to happen is everything is going to shift two along. So that's going to shift there. And we can we don't probably don't need to take all the points. We can take some of the points and shift them across. So then when you join it up, you hopefully get the same shape. Whoops. God, I don't know what happened there. Okay, so when you shift it along, you get the same shape, but shifted minus two along. Okay. Now we're going to work out, we've got ABC and ACD, and we want to work out the size of angle X. Okay, so the nice thing is that first triangle so this triangle over here, which let's highlight in yellow, oops, very thickly, got ACD. This triangle here is a right angle. So it means we can use Sokotoa. So it's like, okay, let's get the side AC. So we want to find this side here to help us then look at the other triangle which is not a right angle triangle and think about what we need to do. So we've got this angle. This is going to be our adjacent and this is going to be our opposite. So we're going to think, okay, so, ka, toa. Ah, we must be using tan. So tan 49 equals the opposite, which is what we want to find, which is AC divided by the adjacent. So AC is going to be 16, because we're going to multiply that 16 up, times both sides, times tan 49. We plug that into our calculator, and we get 18.41. And now we've got our triangle, which is not a right angle. If I redraw it here, we now have 35. We know this is 18.41. We've got 20, and we've got X. When something isn't a right angle, we're either going to use the sine rule or the cosine rule. Because we've got two opposite sides and we want to find an angle, it's the sine rule. So remember, we've got sine A over A equals sine B over B and so on. So we're going to say sine X over 18.41 equals sine 35 over 20. And so that sine x, we're going to multiply both sides by 18.41, will equal 18.41 sine 35 over 20. We now can put it in our calculator. And then what we're going to do is say x equals sine minus 1 of our answer in our calculator, which will equal 31.9. So X is 31.9 degrees. Right, question 26. We've got functions. So remember, if we've got FGX, it means we're putting G inside of F. So it's the second one into the first. So wherever there's an X in F, we're putting all of this. So what we end up with is x squared minus 2 over x squared minus 2 plus 2, which leaves us with x squared minus 2 over x squared, which gives us x squared over x squared minus 2 over x squared. And that cancels out and just leaves you with 1 minus 2 over x squared. But in the answer, they want it as a power. So remember, when something's on the denominator as an indice, we can do it as a minus. So we get 1 minus 2x to the minus 2. Question 27. Right. Lies on the curve where k is a constant. Show. So first we want to find k. Exactly like we did when we were doing like the proportion question. We're going to substitute some numbers in. 
So we know y is 1 over 64, and that equals k to the power of 3. So k to the power of 3 means k cubed. The opposite of cubing is the cube root, which is this button on your calculator. So we take the cube root of 1 over 64, and we get 1 over 4. So we've got y equals 1 over 4 to the x. So now it says show that that point lies on the curve. So we can say, well, when x equals a half, one quarter to the power of a half, put in a calculator, is a half, therefore on the curve. So you're just showing it works. Okay, question 28. We've got a speed time graph. Let's have a look. We want to work out the acceleration during the last eight seconds. So be careful how you read that. So there's 14 seconds in total. The last eight seconds is actually this bit here. Now, acceleration is going to be the gradient of the speed time graph. So you want to find this gradient. So the change in Y over the change in X. Okay, there's no information on the graph. So we have to read the question and find out. It says during the first six seconds, her speed increases. OK, during the last, it's a different rate. OK, so we don't know what this is. And we do we know what this is? We just know it's two more than before. So we know it starts off being. So here you're going to get. Increases at a different rate. Her speed at 14 seconds is two more than her speed at six seconds. Okay, so I'm just going to call this V plus 2. All right. But that's okay for the gradient because we know the difference here is 2. And then we've got our change in X, which we've told is our 8 seconds anyway. So remember, the gradient is our change in Y divided by our change in X. So that's going to give us 0 0.25. And it's acceleration, so it's meters per second squared. Right. When Izzy finishes the race, her speed is V. Work out the value of V. Right, so I've like labeled this a bit wrong. So we'll go back. The end speed we want to be V. So that means the speed before is V minus 2. We know the whole thing is 80 meters. So remember the distance is the area under the curve. So we know, let's have a look at what this area is going to be. Well, this area here, so let's do them in different colours. So let's have a look at this area here is a triangle. And that triangle has a base of 6, so half the base times the height, which is V minus 2. Right, then we've got this area here where we've got a rectangle. So we've got 8 along and V minus 2 up. Okay. And then we have a triangle. We could have done it all as one trapezium, but as we'd already drawn it, we can look at this triangle here. Half the base, which is 8, times the height, which is 2. So that's just going to be 8. Right, so now what we're going to do is put that all together. So... We have our blue bit, uh, which is 3, V minus 2. Um, and we've got 3, V minus 2, 8, V minus 2, and we've got 8. So we can go over to the next bit and put that all together. So we had 3, V minus 2, that's 8 v minus 2 plus 8 and all of that equals 80 so all together we get 3 v minus 6 plus 8 v minus 16 plus 8 equals 80 we get 8 and 3 we put those together so 11 v 
So we've got minus 6, minus 16, plus 8, which leaves us with minus 14 equals 80. I'm going to add 14 on both sides. So we're going to get 11v equals 94. Divide both sides by 11. And we're going to get v equals 8.5. So we've got 8.5 and its velocity, so it's meters per second. If you've watched this all the way through, well done for getting to the end of it. I hope it's been useful and um, look out for the paper three.